Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Harris and welcome back to part three of Brain Health, Cultivating Connection Over Polarization. So today I'd like to share another practice inspired by Amishi Jha from her book, Peak Mind. And it's a connection practice, also known as loving kindness meditation. So this practice is not only used to help develop our attention, which was the whole premise of the book, but to create more empathy, compassion, and kindness towards ourselves and others. Science has also suggested it can improve our mood and well-being, increase our ability to listen, which actually is quite labor intensive when you do it well, because it requires a lot of attention, emotional regulation, and compassion. This practice can also improve our ability to see other perspectives, which I guess is what compassion is. It increases positive social interactions and is an antidote to our implicit biases. So this is perfect timing. To me, our society seems very disconnected and polarized right now, and not just in the political sense of the word, but in a personal and collective way. So could the opposite of polarization be connection? And how does being polarized affect not only our brain health, but our general health and well-being? Recently, I watched how Canada and the world struggled with the Canadian truck convoy and the Joe Rogan debacle. It left me feeling and thinking about how these highly charged events may be affecting our health and how a connection practice could help. So I'm, so I'm a very passionate person, and this week I found myself hunkering down and choosing a side. My brain and body definitely suffered as a result, not to mention the unpleasant pleasant feelings I felt towards people with opposing views. And it just wasn't me. I saw it across the media, across social media, and even through stories of friends and family. I heard many of us taking an us versus them stance, getting our swords and shields out to defend with vigor our way of thinking or being, while dismissing or downright canceling others with opposing thoughts or views. Not many were seeing the other side of things, not to mention the many other ways of looking at this issue or these issues. And what about the polarization between our own ears, within ourselves? So as a personal trainer, over the years, I've had many people come to me with health goals. Time and time again, many fail as something inside them gets in the way. And this not only happens with my clients and the people I see, but it also has happened many times within myself. So could understanding these hidden parts and working with them prove more successful than beating ourselves up for not complying? As passionate as I am, I'd like to be able to maintain and develop my opinions and a sense of self, but I'd also like to be able to respect others. When we become polarized within ourselves about ourself or our outside world, there's a handful of challenges that affect our health and our community at large. So number one, polarization can lead to a fight or flight mentality. In Robert Sapolsky's book, Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers, he illustrates how when a zebra runs from a lion, it elicits a cascade of stress hormones, which mobilize it into action. Once the danger is gone, the zebra goes back to a healthy hormonal and nervous system balance. Sapolsky's concern is that with the current day challenges and the instant notification of yet another thing going wrong, we are often left on high alert most of the time. This can create chronic stress that leads to illness and disease such as heart disease and cancer. And as far as I can see, a very uptight and unhappy individual. For some of us, we may feel the cascade of these hormones, while for others, it may become unconscious. Either way, the energy of those hormones goes somewhere and it's not good. I recently came across a disturbing photo that illustrates what I'm saying here. Now, I'm not sure how you feel about Joe Rogan. I quite like him because I've been listening to him for years, but that's besides the point. But what I'm saying is I'm gonna quote him here and I hope you don't cancel me for it and I just hope you hear the message because I think it's an important one. So he quotes in his Instagram, the man in this photo, and here's another thing, I have a little bit of name dyslexia, so you'll forgive me on the pronunciation of this, but his name is Yevgeny Yev, Stefanovich Kob TV, and I've gone over that many times just to say that. So in 1941, he was a young man who had aspirations of becoming an artist as he loved painting portraits and landscapes. 
He had just graduated from the Kiev State Institute in the Ukraine and was looking to embark on his career as an artist when Germany invaded the Soviet Union. Yevgeny had to set his dreams aside and fight in the war. He, brought in several, he fought in several fierce battles in the Ukraine but was wounded in September of 1941 and became a prisoner of war. He was locked away in a prison camp called Coral Pit where approximately 90,000 civilians, including Jews and POWs, died. The camp was built upon what used to be an old brick factory and only had one barrack to provide shelter. Those that managed to get a spot in the barrack were cramped inside like sardines. Inside, the stench was unbearable, but it was, but it was better than living outside completely vulnerable to the elements. Eugenie, spent two brutal years in the camp before he finally managed to escape. He then quickly rejoined the army and served out the remainder of the war fighting in the battles, in battles to liberate German occupied cities in the Ukraine. So to me, this picture speaks a thousand words. Number two, polarization creates division and can lead to violence. We need look no further than the last few weeks here in Canada, not to mention the last six years in the US, the pandemic and what we should do about it, which has left many of us divided and upset. In an article called Needling Points, Why So Many Are Hesitant to Get the COVID Vaccines and What We Can Do About It by Norman Deutsch, he shows how we have an archaic brain circuit called the Behavioral Immune System, the BIS. It's a circuit that is triggered when we sense we may be near a potential carrier of disease causing disgust, fear, and avoidance. So it's natural for us to feel fear, disgust, and avoidance towards those that we feel may be causing us potential harm. Number three, polarization may make us lose our ability to hold space for diversity of thought and debate. To me, this is the birthplace of innovation, not to mention a heck of an interesting conversation. We have so many real challenges in our society right now that could use creative, innovative, and engaging thoughts and ideas. Imagine what, we, what would become of us if we could all put our hearts and minds together, even when we disagree. So what can we do about this? Well, let's start by softening. So as I'm new to this connection practice, I thought I'd defer to the professionals of the mindfulness-based stress reduction people. And I've left a video in the show notes. It's a short practice that you can try. I'm also going to try it. I do find it a little weird and foreign, but I thought I'm going to give it a try for the next month, every or five days a week for uh, 12 minutes, or I think the video is about 13 minutes. And I'm going to see what happens because it's got to be better than how I've been feeling over the last couple of weeks. And perhaps we can consider a few more things. These were a few of my thoughts over this last week. As my friend John McMullen says, we can all learn how to fight fair. And what he means by that is definitely representing yourself, but then learning to listen with respect, empathy, and curiosity to others. Another inspiring teacher, Brene Brown, says this about empathy. She says, I need, she says, I need to learn how to listen to the story you tell about what it's like in your shoes and believe you, even if it doesn't match my experiences. To me, that's a pretty powerful statement too. And how about we stop defending and proving and begin to be curious about what others are trying to say and actually why they're saying it. We can engage in dialogue with people we don't agree with, with respect and kindness. And we can have a voice, but maybe it's about developing it, challenging it, growing with it, so we don't become stuck in a dogmatic way of thinking. And most importantly, begin to have these types of conversations with our own conflicted parts. To me, it's the best way to move forward in our health, well-being, and life pursuits, but also that we can start connecting to ourselves, our community, the people we love, and the world at large. What a better way to live life than that. So thank you for joining me today. If you uh, do try the practice, I would love to know how it goes for you and you can put it in the comments below. And I'll look forward to seeing you all on my next vlog.